This conference will now be recorded. Okay, everybody, we are uh, two minutes away from actually starting the call. And um, just for those of you that are on the call right now, I'm just going to let you know that I'm going to try my best to um, pack this call with as much information as humanly possible and, um, you know, give you as much value as, as I'm able to give you. Uh, so we have an hour on this call. And, uh, you know, so once again, this call, as you saw from your email, is uh, going to be about how to go from literal zero to $100,000 in the course of a 12-month span. Um, some people a little less, some people more, um, but it is going to be absolutely no bull, right? So this is a no BS call. Um, I will literally give you... Uh, all the information um, that you would need, period. Um, nothing will be held back. Uh, there's no reason to, right? So unfortunately, I, I give out a lot of information to a lot of people. Some of them use it, and most do not. And I give it out freely. And the reason I do it is because, honestly, um, I've always found that, uh, for me personally, giving out information um, positions me, right? It positions me as as someone that people, um, A, um, believe in, B, trust, and C, do business with. So um, the business part, you know, the them doing business with me, you know, is always number three because a lot of people, they will, uh, they will like you, they will trust you, but, you know, they choose to do business elsewhere for whatever reason. And honestly, I really don't give a crap. So this call is now officially starting, and we're going to get started right this minute. So once again, this call is uh, Power Monday's Mastermind, and it is 9 a.m. today on this awesome day in Southern California, one twenty one twenty nineteen. So. We're going to start this call off by by talking about um, how to develop a business from zero, from literal. If you don't have a dime in your pocket as of right this moment, I, I'm going to show you how you can um, start creating money without any money, right? And I'm going to, I'm going to tell you exactly what I've done um, because I have gone broke multiple times. It's the fate of an entrepreneur, um, and I have. Uh, rebuilt myself uh, multiple times. So the very first thing I'm going to talk about is, is uh, uh, my my primary company. And the reason I'm going to talk about this because I've had this company since uh, 92, right, um, when I first um, started. So back in 92 was one of those periods of time when um, when – I went broke, like like completely, utterly broke. The things I was doing did not work. And so it literally, um, I had to think of ways to, to create money. Um, and so what I ended up doing was I just started thinking about what can I do to create money. And I'm telling you guys, you can do this with almost anything, right? What can I do to create money that would, that I didn't have to have any money to start with? And so for me, the very first thing I thought about, just because it happened to be in my circle of influence at that time, was setting up corporations. So what I ended up doing is I got online and I started trying to figure out how to set up corporations because, you know, I didn't know how to set up a corporation. But um, I saw that back then people were advertising on um, Craigslist uh, for corporations, for credit repair, you know, for all these things that I could do that didn't require me to have any money. So uh, there was this guy I knew back in the day, uh, Perrin, and Perrin was um, good at, at uh, setting up corporations. As a matter of fact, he had set my first uh, couple of corporations up. 
and then um, I was like, well, if a parent can do it, I can do it, right? Because we're on the same level, if you will. Um, he just That was just a, a bit of information that he went out and learned. So all I simply did was I had no clue on how to set up a corporation, but I knew I could do it. So I started marketing on um, Craigslist back in the day in order to uh, offer people corporations. And so I would just put up ads every single day, and then I started getting phone calls. And, you know, obviously Craigslist was free back then. I would get, and it still is, a lot of the sections of Craigslist are free, and then some of them are like $3 and some of them are $5 now. But there are still free sections on Craigslist that you can post in. So the deal is this. I just started posting up ads because I figured one thing. Once somebody gave me their money, I'm going to figure out how to create this corporation for them. It didn't matter because I knew I knew how to do two things. I knew how to read and I knew how to um, uh, follow simple instructions. So I'm not the brightest guy. You know, my ass barely made out of high school because I was too busy um, chilling out, smoking, and and just, you know, trying to be that guy, right? So, um, but I've, I've, regardless of my, uh, um, you know, barely making out of high school, I've made a lot more money than a whole lot of people that graduated high school, went to college, and, and are working every day at some job that they hate. So my point to you is, with this business, with the cor um, um, corporation thing, that was my starting point. That was where, um, you know, was, I went broke. I needed to make money. And I was like, well, what can I do? What can I do to make money? And so corporations was one of those things that I could do that I didn't have to have any specific skill set in, any licensing in, anything, right? And so I literally started advertising, and then I got my first sale. And I remember um, someone paid me $699 to set up their corporation. And that was, was and still is a lot of money to me. And so then I had to figure out, you know, where can I get this, um, uh, their corporate kit and all this other crap. So I literally got online and just researched corporate kits. I found a place in L.A. called Attorneys Corporation Service. And you guys need to write that down because you guys may want to use them for yourself. Now, Attorneys Service Corporation and my contact person there is a young lady by the name of Rita. And if you call her, um, you just you tell her that Pascal referred you. You know, I don't get anything from it, but it's a good look for you. I'm just telling you that up front. And so I had called Rita, and um, what I found out about Attorney Service Corporation is that not only can I get my corporate kits from them, but I can also um, have them do all the filing for me. So, you know, and they, they I think it's like um, – um, Thirty-five or forty-five dollars that they charge on top of the corporation, right? Whatever the state secretary of state fees to do the filing for you. So it's a business that you can literally do, um, collect the money first, and then subsequently go out and start, um, uh, uh, you know, getting this done for you. And if you don't want to go to the secretary of state's website yourself and and fill out the four little four or five uh, forms, uh, you can have them do it. So, you know, I was literally able to start this business without a dime in my pocket because I didn't have a dime to spend. And then subsequently go and, um, uh, have somebody else even do the work if I so desired. Now, some things I didn't bother paying them for because like for, uh, filling out a corp for the secretary of state in California, uh, or an LLC is like four lines. You literally go to the Secretary of State's website, and it's you put in the name of the business at the top. You put in the uh, the 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 address of the business, which can be your home address if you want it to be, and you put in the uh, uh, the 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 person, right? Um, I'm having brain fade, so excuse me. I have like fifteen thousand things on my mind that I want to tell you guys. <coughs> excuse me. So you just you you put in the person 
um, that's representing the corporation and the name of which I cannot think of at this second. But um, and then their address, which can be the same as the business address. Um, and then you uh, print the form, sign the form, and you, you can drop it in the mail to the Secretary of State, or you can do like I do, and I just have it use that very same company I just mentioned, Attorney Service Corporation, and I have them um, simply uh, do a courier service thing for me because it, it allows the corporation to go through faster when it's couriered to Sacramento and then back. And then the other thing that became uh, very rare to me uh, is that I could literally advertise for free, once again, on Craigslist to anywhere in the country. And I found out that there are certain states, right, that do better in certain things. So California, obviously, because of the size of California, um, there's just so many people here. So your numbers are just great. Texas, I don't know what it is about Texas, but, you know, there's, there's always people in this credit arena and corporate arena that are looking for people to um, uh, do stuff for them. So um, uh, Atlanta, I've always done well in, in, in Atlanta in particular, and then Georgia to a degree. Uh, Chicago, Illinois, Detroit, uh, once again, Houston and Dallas, Texas. Um, most of California, most of the, um, of the city areas, if you advertise in those areas of California, I've, I've always done well in those. Um, and then to a lesser degree, uh, places like, like um, uh, New Jersey and New York, but still nonetheless have been profitable for me personally. Um, and then once I started doing that, I started thinking to myself, well, what else can I do to generate even more capital, right? Because the corporation thing was, was good, but my price point, and I didn't want a small or lower price point, but my price point was such that um, I, I wasn't getting enough clients in with the corporation thing. And so one of the other things that I found that um, uh, people were uh, always looking for but very leery of doing business with people with this particular thing was credit repair, right? So I just figured, um, you know, I, I knew a little bit about credit just from um, having so many blemishes on my own and, and having to, um, being an entrepreneur once again all my life, I've had to, um, uh, you know, just literally constantly have to try to get something negative off of my credit, right? Um, I was a really bad steward of my money and also a bad steward of my of my credit. And so, and I take responsibility for that and everyone else should as well. So the deal is, is that I needed some other avenue to, that would generate capital for me as well. Um, and that other avenue was credit repair because everybody and their mama wanted it, right? Um, and quite frankly, needed it. So... I started doing the corporations and then subsequently the credit repair. And, and the thing is, I didn't know enough about credit repair to legitimately say that I can do credit repair, but I didn't give a crap. I just advertised for it anyway because I figured, you know, what I've always read, what I've always heard um, when I was uh, in my early 20s, um, you know, just out of high school, I used to sell cars and I sold cars very badly, extremely badly. I was probably the worst salesperson. But the point was is that I learned something that was very valuable to me and has, has stayed with me for the rest of my existence, which is that when you um, know just 10% more than the person you're talking to, that's when you can sell them a car. That's when you can sell them anything. You don't have to be, uh, a, 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 uh, you know, like some mechanic or, or some car guru or some crap. All you have to be is just, just know 10% more about the product that you're talking about to a person and you can sell them. And that's what my uh, sales manager used to just like push down my throat um, was that if you know 10% more about this car than the people that are buying it, you're going to sell cars all day. And so... I think I was a bad sell, car sales person because I just, I didn't like the pressure put on me and then subsequently that I had, I felt like I had to put on my, uh, the people that were coming on the lot, you know, okay, bye, bye, bye. It just, it just wasn't my personality. But once again, that 10% rule really, really stuck with me and it has served me very, very well. So because most of the things that I have done since that period of time have, have been with that rule. 
if I can just learn 10% of something, you know, more than the average person, then I can make money at it. And that has how it has been for me. And I believe that to be true for any person um, on this call, off this call, or whatever. If you just know 10% more, get that business started, okay? That's all, it, it, that's all it's required. So once again, I started, this, I started marketing for, for, um, uh, for doing credit repair for people. And the thing was, I didn't really know crap about it other than the little bit of letters that I had sent out for myself. But I did know, once again, that I knew how to read and I knew how to uh, comprehend basic information. So all I simply did was I went out and I just got online and started finding books to read on credit repair. And I ran across a book that I, I've been telling people about forever, which is Good Credit is Sexy. I literally, from that book and then subsequently buying her, um, her, her, you know, pre-made credit repair letters, right? So the lady's name is Rachel Walsh, who wrote that book, Good Credit is Sexy. Um, and uh, you can go to her website. It's not her website anymore. I think she, she sold it a long time ago. But nonetheless, it's called Credit Info Center, right? And for $39, something I used to pay $400 for, you guys can now get for 39 bucks, right? $39. It's crazy. And that will include her book. It includes 90 credit repair letters. It includes workbooks. It includes um, uh, how to negotiate um, um, different types. So it's, it's, a, it's a whole complete package. It, it's literally everything a person would need for, for $29 or $39 to do credit repair. And I'm going to tell you about this because it's really important to understand this. Once again, I didn't know shit about credit repair. Excuse my language, I cuss a lot, so forgive me. But the point is that I didn't know anything about credit repair, but I knew that I needed more money. So my desperation created, in my mind, opportunity, right? It made me say to myself that I got to do this. I got to do this. And so I literally said to myself, I can be the lowest guy on the totem pole with credit repair, and I can be the, uh, 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 somewhere in the middle or the upper end guy. And, and just by circumstance, I had run into or met uh, or heard of a guy named Daniel. And this guy, Daniel, even back then, was charging um, like three to $5,000 to do credit repair. And I was like, God, dog, I, I don't, I can't, because I can't perform what he performs. I can tell you how I met Daniel, actually. I had heard about Daniel because um, he was the guy when I was, you know, doing better um, that was able to um, take anything off of your credit, right? I mean, he was, he was just like, uh, he had some kind of magical formula. So, you know, and, and that's how I heard about him. And, and so I knew I couldn't charge his prices because I didn't have his skill set. But I knew I could charge a decent price for, um, you know, um, not his prices, but a decent price because I know me and I knew that, A, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not running from anybody, right? And so as long as there's an opportunity to get something removed by buying that information that I had bought, starting off with the book, Good Credit is Sexy, and then subsequently buying the rest of her stuff, right? Because back then I could, I could only afford the book, Good Credit is Sexy. And so I had to use the, the, what she laid out in her book without using her letters to, um, to start that business. And let me tell you, I made literal thousands of dollars from that. And I just started telling people. I told people at, my, at the barbershop, um, this barbershop I used to go to, this guy Roy, um, good buddy of mine, he owned the shop. And I was like, hey, Roy, anybody you know, man, just tell them uh, I can get their credit done for them. I can get their uh, corporation set up for them. You know, whatever, I can do it, right? So Roy would send me people. I would tell other people I knew. I would advertise on, um, once again, on uh, Craigslist back then. I, was, I needed the money. And so that need, that want, and that desire that I had superseded my fear factor, my level of fear, um, and also uh, it superseded um, me having to know something before I got started. So once again, I can't stress this part enough. If you want to do something, just do it. 
And in the process of the do, everything else comes together. Because if you're, you're, if you're actively pursuing, if you're actively doing something, it's, it's, I call it universal law, call it whatever you want to, I really don't care, but everything just starts to come. And the reason I believe, I believe it starts to come is because you are actively moving in a direction. And when you are actively moving in a direction, your consciousness, yourself is open to whatever happens in that in that move in that direction you're going in and so therefore you start noticing things that you had not before and i use the analogy of you know you go oh my god you know there's um i really like this new whatever type of car you know and i want it in this color and so on and so forth and the next thing you know when you when you're going down the freeway now you're seeing more of that toyota or more of that nissan or whatever it is you start seeing more of whatever it is that is is in your mind the most, right? People that I know um, that are, um, I don't well, I don't want to use that as an example. Um, just, I, I've always noticed that, that people that are moving in a certain direction, they tend to notice and then be attracted to those things that they notice. So if, you, if there's a car that you like all of a sudden, you know, now all of a sudden you see so many of them, you're sick of them. Um, and it's the same thing with every other aspect of your existence, in my opinion, is that when, like me, if you are in need to, of, of creating capital, like I was and still am, right, um, and you say, I'm going in X, Y, Z direction, then the gates open up and subsequently um, you start, you know, finding the stuff that you need. A, because you're actively pursuing that direction, and B, you, you're, you're, you become more open to things from that direction, right? You know, I don't want to get all, you know, metaphysical on you guys, so I'll, I'll leave that part there. But do you get what I'm trying to explain to you? All you have to do literally, literally, is say to yourself, I'm, I'm, I need more money, right? And then be open to how you can make that money. For me, it started off with uh, setting up corporations for people. And the money was good, but it wasn't great, right? And then I, I went to doing uh, credit repair for people. Both things I could start from zero with no skill set, no money, no nothing, but I could start it from zero because I didn't have to perform until someone paid me. And since I know that I don't want any BS from anybody, guess what? I'm going to do the job. Right? Because I don't want to hear a bunch of extra crap in my life. So I know that I'm going to do the job, and that's exactly what I would do. I would do the job for what they paid me. Excuse me. And I would charge enough. I would never, ever, ever be cheap in whatever it is you do. Right? There's, there's, there's plenty of room at the top. There's plenty of room in the middle. And there's, 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 if you're, if you're bottom pricing yourself, it's just not worth it. When you speak to someone, you just have to, you have to speak with the confidence and, 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 the, and the desire of pleasing that individual enough and know 10% more than they do in order for you to make you, whatever venture it is successful, right? And so the next thing that I decided to do was um, the, the credit repair was working well. Um, I was charging, back then it was something like um, 100 and, Fifty or one hundred and sixty dollars per line, um, one hundred and fifty or one hundred and sixty dollars per line, uh, and, and which was good for me, right? I mean, that for me personally was awesome. But um, hopefully, you guys are still there. My uh, my computer has has went out for me. Okay, hopefully you guys, everyone's still there. So the the deal is is that you know that was good for me. Um, one hundred and sixty dollars per line across all three bureaus. So if something was was across was across um, all three bureaus. Then you know I would take it off, right? Or if it was across you know just two bureaus or one bureau, but it was like one hundred and sixty dollars per line. What I want to ask, I just had like a computer glitch. What I want to ask is, can you guys, if someone can just put in the text box that you guys can hear me okay? JD, are you still there?
Okay, so JD, okay, you guys are, can you still hear me? That's awesome. Um, okay, so in, let, me, let me answer a question real quick. Um, Tiffany asked, uh, can you give me the name of the company again? Um, the name for the corporations, Tiffany, is, is that what you're asking about? Oh. I'm sorry? Okay, great. Um, so the name of the, the, the company um, that I use for corporations, is, I believe that's what you're asking me about, is Attorney Service Corporation. And the contact person there would be Rita. And you can just tell her that Pascal referred you. All right, cool, cool. So, if hopefully that was, that answered your question, Tiffany. Yeah. So, Attorneys for Service Corporation. You can Google them. Obviously, they're a huge company. And and just FYI, on Attorney Service Corporation, they're not some little uh, sidebar corporate a business, they actually, you know, like all these, everybody knows of LegalZoom, right? LegalZoom does not do their own work. If you call LegalZoom, they don't know squat. Um, Attorney Service Corporation processes all of their corporations anywhere in the country. Um, they also do the same for Rocket Lawyer and, and any other large company that you can think of. Um, it's actually that company, Attorney Service Corporation, and that processes literally all of their um, uh, incorporation filings. Because if you ever talk to somebody at um, uh, LegalZoom, the, the, the young men, young women that are there, literally, they don't know anything. And that's why I've always felt like I can charge more, excuse me, for my corporations, even from the beginning, is because I did have some knowledge of building corporate credit. I did have some knowledge... Uh, which is really simple, right? Um, and I did have some knowledge of business in general because I've always been an entrepreneur. And so I felt that me charging $699 um, was nothing to somebody because they're going to get me along with that me setting up the corporation. And just another FYI, so I charge $699 to people to set up their corporations, but my cost factor is less than $300. So um, the the deal is because like to file in the state of California, a an LLC is like seventy five dollars. Um, but then you got to pay the the fifteen dollar um, counter fee, um, unless you mail it in. But uh, you got to pay the fifteen dollar counter fee, and then I also pay an additional forty five dollars to the attorney's corporation service. Um, and then for a uh, corporation in the state of California is a hundred dollars plus the $15 calorie fee, plus the $45. So, you know, but, oh, and then I'm sorry. And then I, for the kits, I get what's referred to as the compact gold because it has everything a person needs in it. It's the standard kit that you would see. So um, that cost me, like, it's under 70 bucks for the, for the kit. And, <clears throat> excuse me, they will mail that. If you're out of state, they will mail the kits to you. So you're... Your your cost is going to be about seventy dollars for the kit. It's going to have your. It's going to come with state specific minutes and bylaws already in it. It's going to come with you know beautifully. Um, um, uh, I shouldn't say beautifully, but a, a, a beautiful um, stock certificates with your company's name on it or your client's company's name on it. It's just they look really awesome, very professional, and and so you know you figure. Um, by the time you've uh, paid for the for the corp, had everything shipped to you, yada yada yada, you know, 250 bucks maybe, right? I just say under 300 because I I add in my gas going back and forth to the city of Commerce to pick up the uh, to drop stuff off and pick it up. So I always calculate my cost at 300 dollars. But you know, do you understand how simple that is? You know, it's it's literally creating a business by being the middle person. You're literally creating a business by being the middle person. You are literally collecting money first before you spend a dime. And that's what is so awesome about when you do stuff like corporations. I mean, I don't want you guys to get it twisted. There are literally 
hundreds, if not thousands of business models that are out there that you can go from zero to a hundred thousand dollars in. Um, and I'll tell you about some new stuff that we're doing as well because it's fruitful. Um, the, 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 let's see, let's, uh, do they, H Corporation. Um, Tiffany's asking a question about H Corporations. This is another thing that I'm going to tell you guys that you guys can market and make good money on. You know, for me, I tell my clients, you don't need an H Corporation, but people want them. People are, are, are just hot for H Corporations. And so I get calls on a fairly regular basis, even without marketing H Corporations, people asking for H Corporations. So I'm going to give you guys a tidbit of information that you should use if you want to make money starting from nothing. Um, there's a company called the Wyoming Company, right? In, if you go, you just Google them. The Wyoming Company, um, they literally are the best place to go. There's a couple of places like them, but I like them. Um, and they do uh, age corporations. Um, the Wyoming Company is awesome. It is, you know, they have um, aged, seasoned, whatever you want to refer to them as, corporations for almost every state of the union. Um, you know, obviously, the older stuff sells much faster um, than, the, than, the, than the younger corporations, the year and two year stuff. So you have to really check and you might even want to, you might even want to get with them um, in order to uh, see, you know, what they have available at that time. You know, you can probably, you can call their 800 number. So yes, that's what I would suggest for you is um, the Wyoming Corporation, Tiffany. All right. So does anybody else have any questions? Just you can type them in the inbox. And I hope you guys are getting stuff out of this, getting good information out of this. I'm trying not to stick with one specific thing too much, but I just want to make sure that you all um, understand um, as much as humanly possible what I'm trying to put across to you. So uh, corporations, um, credit repair. The other thing that I started doing, um, which literally, uh, for me, just helped out immensely, right, which was I started doing um, credit profile numbers, CPNs, whatever. And the reason I started doing that is because as I was marketing these other services online, um, the corporations and credit repair, I saw that there were a lot of people marketing. So this is very important uh, for you guys to, ca to catch. I saw a lot of people marketing CPNs, credit profile numbers, right? Excuse me. And so I was like, I can do that, right? Didn't know squat about CPNs. So the way it kind of worked for me is I saw people marketing it. I said, oh, let me buy one. And so I, I found some guy, a uh, young guy, um, back east somewhere, and he was like, um, you know, I, I obviously, like I do with everybody, I created a rapport with him, and I started saying, well, look, man, um, I'm getting them from you. If you give me a deal on them, I will, you know, I'll, I'll buy more of them from you. And so it was really simple. All I simply did was go to this guy, and I didn't have to buy anything up front. Once again, because I didn't, I didn't want to spend the money. I didn't really have the money to spend buying a bunch of stuff. But I, you know, but I, I knew that people wanted credit profile numbers. So all I simply did was just start putting them on Craigslist back then. Craigslist does not accept you advertising blatantly CPNs nowadays, but back then they did. You people are marketing CPNs every day, but they're advertising it differently by, you know, um, running ads talking about. Um, they'll help you get into an apartment, things like that. So the verbiage has to be different in order for you to sell CPNs. And when people call, then you say, well, I can help you get into an apartment by utilizing a CPN, so on and so forth. But anyways, um, I don't know, a long time ago, a couple of decades ago, I started, um, uh, shortly, uh, I call it a decade and a half, I started offering CPNs by going to this guy and then um, this young man had had made so money uh, enough money that he started buying real estate. So he subsequently got out of the business. And then when he got out of the business, I had to find someone else to um, uh, to you know get them from. And so I just did some research online and I found someone um, to get them from. 
And quite, quite honestly, I got them from, from this other person at a much lower price. Now, this person, I can't give out their name and information because that's just the agreement. But um, uh, to get them from, and then subsequently, even after that, I, I bought the information after I started generating money, which and I'm going to tell you with the CPN thing, I literally went from zero to several thousand dollars a month within maybe 60 days. We're doing the advertising, marketing, CPNs, because the market was and still is hot. It's not as hot as it once was, but the marketplace for this was and still is hot, right? Um, but once again, not as hot as it once was. Uh, but then I also learned about, um, oh, well, let me just finish with the CPN. So with the CPN thing, you know, I have literally selling my program, because I don't sell CPNs directly, I give CPNs away when people buy my credit building system. So it's basically a couple of eBooks that I sell, which is my credit building system. And when they buy my credit building system, then I give them the CPN. Once again, you don't have to have a dime. I didn't have to have a dime to start this business. And this business turned into a $100,000 a year business for me. You, you get the simplicity and the magic of this. It doesn't take anything. It takes your effort. You know what I'm saying? But it doesn't take a financial stake in your business in order to get your business up and running properly. It does not take a financial stake in order to get your business. You just have to find a resource. Find Well, number one, you need to find something that people want. Number two, once you find what people want, what, there's, what, what people have a a hunger for, a desire for. Once you find that, and then you take it upon yourself to go out, and if you're diligent, then you will just simply, um, literally, it's just, let me just say this. This crap is so simple, it's not even funny. Even the CPN thing. Did no squat about CPN. Did not know nothing, but I knew one thing. I could read, right? I can't stress this to you all enough. I could read. And so, therefore, I would read. I would find out as much as I could about them. I, I Googled CPNs, and I found information on the FBI's website about them and, and the legitimacy of them, right, as far as what the FBI says. And I figured, eh, if the FBI says it, it has to be straight. And then I started reading more and more. And then I was able to regurgitate that information to the people that were calling me and asking me questions. Does that make sense? That's all you all have to do is – if you want to make a hundred grand over the next twelve months, let's say, find something, this or something else, where you can make money without starting with anything. That's all I've ever done. Um, even back in the day, one of my one of my first businesses, if you will. Um, I used to put on little little promotions, little concerts, and I would make the deal I would make with people is I would I, I started that business when I was 16, so you know, but I would I would go to these different places like the YWCA or whatever back then back in the day, and um, basically uh, either they would let me have the place for free because it was a quote unquote team event or something. Um, or I'd have to put down some small deposit, like 50 bucks or something, and then pay them the rest after the fact, you know, and it was, it's every time I've had success, it has come from my, my desire in, in, in wanting to create, right? Nothing more. Does that make sense to you guys? Okay. I hope it does. Um, so now the CPN thing. Once again, it's just finding someone, finding, um, and then selling the product and then coming in, uh, getting your, your, selling the product first, getting your money, and then subsequently, um, you know, buying that product once you've been paid for it. With all these different things and so many different avenues, um, you can do this. So we started a new business, my, my wife and I, and this, in this new business, it's, pretty simple. It's um, I back in the day, one of the other things I've, I've done in my, you know, when I was much younger is my, my mother and I started a uh, fish store, you know, like I was, I don't know, 18 or something. And so, you know, what I learned was how to buy storage auctions. But then what I also learned is 
when you had a little thrift store, people would bring you all this stuff. And then I learned how to go out to the swap meets. And then what I learned is that, you know, there's money in, uh, in other people's garbage. And so here recently, I, I had a young lady, a, a, a buddy of mine, who was desperate for capital. And, um, you know, I just started telling her about, you know, buying and selling some stuff. Just find some stuff to buy and sell. And she was like, well, pass. You know, all these people are making money um, selling vintage. And I'm like, clothes are huge, right? And so she did her due diligence. And so then she started going to, um, uh, um, I'm sorry, Salvation Army, Goodwill, you know, all these different places and other thrift stores and buying stuff off of their racks, right? Um, and then subsequently putting it on places like Poshmark, Macari, um, eBay, um, well, let's see, Poshmark, Macari, eBay. There's another place that I can't think of it. But anyways, on Macari, she's making a kill. I had never heard of Macari before. Um, oh, and offer up. And so basically off of 20 items that she's into for maybe from a dollar to five dollars, she, you know, grossed six hundred dollars. And, and so you get that. I mean, you see how simple that is? There's a place that we found just because my energy had changed and my wife was like, you know, eh, I want to do something different. Um, I put that out there and just started talking about, it. yeah, we're going to start, you know, buying and selling, um, uh, you know, vintage clothes. And just so happened, one of my uh, people that I deal with, Joy Sterling, was like, oh, you know what? Um, off of La Brea, there's a place called uh, Jet Rack. And every Sunday, they have a dollar sale for clothes. So we went out there. It was a madhouse. It was like people buying the last Furby doll or, or the last Tickle Me Elmo or something. Or, you know, just, just picture, um, what is it, Black Friday, Walmart sales, people acting like an idiot. That's how it was with people buying these bundles, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm buying, buying these clothes for a dollar a piece. And it was the first time we went, I counted like 80 people. We didn't buy anything. Um, because I didn't feel like being crushed by the mob, but they open up these bundles of bags and people just go in, they dive in, and then they're taking these bundles of bags and, um, you know, the clothes that they pick out of them anyway, and then they subsequently, um, they're buying them for a buck a piece and then they're taking them and selling them on places like Poshmark, like, um, um, Macari, like eBay and so on and so forth as vintage clothing. And then when they sell it, I mean, they're selling it, um, anywhere from uh, 20 to $40 an item, and they're paying a buck for it. So once again, it's an avenue. And so with my wife and I, we decided that, um, especially at a buck, um, and at this point in time and stage in our existence, you know, that, you know, spending 100 or 2 or 3 or 4 or $500 is not a big deal. So I just went to the guy who was running the thing, and I was like, hey, dude, um, I heard that you could buy these bundles for a hundred bucks because I'm not going to do all that diving in the clothes crap. And um, he was like, yeah, man, I'll, I'll sell you a bundle for a hundred bucks. So since then we've bought five bundles, you know, we spent the 500 bucks. Um, just what we've gone through so far and had cleaned. Um, we have 200 on a rack right now, 200 pieces of clothes that are extremely sellable, right? Um, there was a young man that I met there the first day, first time we went, and he's literally making his living um, four, five, and six thousand dollars a month. Um, it just depends on the month, right? He's had better months, but just on average, he's about five grand a month. He's making his living buying these dollar clothes and selling them online, and he sells um, overseas. He sells on a website called. Um, uh, ASOS Marketplace, which I one thing I never heard of it before, but people in England are willing to buy his his stuff that he's buying for a dollar, for forty and fifty and sixty dollars, because he calls himself a designer and he puts them together. I mean, but who gives a crap? You guys get my point with all this stuff. If you want to make money, you want to go from zero to to a hundred grand, or from zero to fifty grand, or an extra five hundred dollars a month you know, the possibilities are endless in this, right? And so once you get this, so now I'm going to kind of shift gears a little bit. This is very important because I want you guys to understand that, that 
if you need the money, if you want the money, the money is there to be made, and you can do so without start, starting from literal scratch, from nothing, zero, nada. And if you want um, um, help or whatever, you know, call me. I mean, obviously, I charge 250 an hour for consulting, but what I will tell you is that I talk a lot, obviously. And so within my talking a lot, you know, I, I have no problem in giving out, giving to you all um, information for free. Um, so I'm going to kind of shift gears now because one of the things I want you guys to, to also glean from this phone call is that once you start with building up some capital, I want you guys to desperately start working on your personal credit. Please, please, please start working on your personal credit. You can do it yourself. I've given you the information to do that. Just if it's just a letter a week that you send out or two that you send out, just start working on your personal credit. Start utilizing this money that you're getting for nothing or you're getting it for something, your effort. Utilize this money that you're going to start manifesting, start creating, and start putting it towards building yourself because this is going to make a difference, right? This is going to change your existence from, from wherever you're at now to where you truly want to be. So once you start generating capital, you've got to start cleaning up your credit. You must. It is mandatory. It is a thing that just absolutely has to happen. Clean up your personal credit. Um, two weeks ago, I sent out a free ebook to everybody on my list, to 5,000 people on my list. I sent this free ebook out, and it has the, the subject line was Pascal Mansell's new credit. Uh, I'm sorry, new trade lines, something like that. New primary trade lines, that's what it was. So it's so an ebook that I put together and I sent it out to everyone. So um, if you're on this call, more than likely you're on my list. So therefore, you should have that free ebook I sent out. It's broken down with all the starter credit places that you could go after in order to get and build your credit file. All right? Um, you need that information. You want that information, I should say, because as you're building out your personal credit, you're going to want to start adding positive credit to your credit. You're going to want to start adding positive credit, these, these trade lines, these brand new trade lines, to your personal credit file. So if you start off with something like uh, My Jewelers Club, it, that's awesome. I don't care. Start with something, and they're all listed there. Excuse me. Um, because you want to start removing the negatives and, and increasing the positives on your credit. We want to get you to a 720 FICO score, 725 FICO score or better as quickly as possible. And in my, what I have seen is that a person can do that even if they're moving at a snail's pace between 6 and 12 months. And if you're moving rapidly, you can be there between 3 and 6 months. So. Please, 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 as you're utilizing the things that I've been talking about, and it, it doesn't have to be um, corporations, CPNs, um, or, uh, I'm sorry, credit repair, or any of this stuff. It doesn't have to be those things to start with. It can be whatever it is that you find that people want and that you can find a subsequent place to get those items after you've been paid for those items, right? Um, that's all it's about. If there's a, if, if, if you're looking and there's a hot market, there is a, uh, you have a, a, a group of people that have a burning desire to purchase whatever it is that you have, then get into that marketplace. As long as you can do so, as long as you can start selling the product before you have to buy it. That's, that is the whole concept. Uh, in this computer age of drop shipping, we have a, a drop ship site, as a matter of fact. Um, and it's that whole site is stuff we've just imported from places like um, AliExpress. And, and literally, when someone buys it from our site, the, we, we get a notification. And then our, the software that we have will log on to AliExpress, buy the item put in their shipping information, and then send it to them. But if you don't have the money to get all this software crap right now, you, you know, there's a gazillion things that you can buy um, from, from, uh, uh, from AliExpress and have it shipped, 
um, to your client. Uh, once they've purchased it from you, there's a thousand things that you can buy from eBay and resell it. There's a thousand things that that you, if you know, you know that the items are there, you you know you can do that, um, and it's not spend a dime out of your pocket. So let me get back to the credit thing because that's that's so important with all of this. One of the reasons I want you guys to start making money is because I want you guys to get your credit right. Um, it's imperative that you get your credit right. I need you guys making money, and then I need you guys to get your credit right, and then I need you guys to set up a corporation, and then I need you guys to start going after business lines of credit, credit cards, and then subsequently business lines of credit, right? Um, I charge $5,000 to, to walk people through this process. And I'm giving you guys all this information for free. Now, all you have to do is just just go and, and just start doing it, right? If you want my help, it's five grand. So you can, you can, you can you know, go around the five grand if you want. We charge right now $2,000 for credit repair because it's not just credit repair. It's credit repair and rebuilding, right? My, that's our objective is to repair a person's credit and subsequently rebuild it. But I'm giving you the tools right now so that you can do it yourself if you so desire. If you want to pay me the $2,000, absolutely. You get me in full, right? And, and we will work on your credit. We will get the derogatories removed. Um, we will help you rebuild yourself, all that good stuff. But it's going to cost you two grand, and I'm giving you the tools already to do so. Um, if you want to, to go after thirty dollars to $300,000 in business credit, I will do that for you. I will, you know, you, you pay me the $5,000. Uh, if you can't afford the five grand, you give me a thousand dollars down and then you pay me for the next 11 months, $500 a month. Yeah, I'll do all that for you. All right. But all of what I've just told you still goes to what I've been teaching you on this phone call. I'm getting paid first before I have to provide the service. You understand that? I'm getting paid even on my $5,000 program. Before I have to spend a nickel or a dime, I'm getting paid first five grand to provide you a service. Do you guys understand the power of that? You don't have to shortchange yourself. You don't have to cheat yourself. You don't have to any of that crap. All you have to do is just do the thing, right? Just do the thing. And, I, and you know, I, if you guys have questions, I mean, uh, we only have 10 minutes. So if you have a question, you might want to answer it because we have, we have 10 minutes left. And if there are no questions, um, I'm going to speak about a few more things, uh, and then I'm going to get off the phone, quite frankly, because I have other things to do if no one wants to participate. Is this, is this of any value to you guys? Have you been able to glean anything from this? Good morning, Pascal. Good morning. Who am I speaking with? Hi. Hi, it's Dr. Barbara. Oh, hey, how are you? Oh, I'm good. I'm good. I'm loving good. the information. The download is wonderful. I wanted to ask awesome. you a question because sure. I've had a couple of people ask me about the um, uh, age corporations. Now, I have to that we kept up on, but we didn't really do very much with it. And I was considering selling them. Absolutely. So uh, what is what, what do you think? Because one of them is an 11-year-old corporation, and the other one is about a year. So price-wise, how would I put the value and the work on it? Well, it's going to depend greatly on, you know, uh, like, so the, the corporation that's 11 years old, um, have, the, have the fees been paid on it every year? Uh, in the state of California, as you know, it's eight eight fifty yes. a year. And, and yes. so if the it's fees not... have been paid on that every year, then, you know, you could get, now I'm going to say this, but what I'm going to suggest to you is that you go to the Wyoming company, right, which I mentioned earlier, where that's, they sell shelf corporations. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, and, and by the way, for everybody on the call, the Wyoming company not only sells shelf corporations, but they also have a, a wholesaler's program, so you can get the corporations at even less than what they're 
showing you online. So what I would suggest to you is on whatever the age of your corporations, I would go to the Wyoming company, Wyoming company and just price match. And then just figure out, you know, do you want to you know, price match with them? Do you want to be a little bit above or a little bit below them? That's going to be up to you. But on an 11-year-old um, uh, entity that has, you know, if it's in great standing, you know, that is it's a huge range I'm going to give you. But because it's a California corporation, I would say you can well, probably it's not give California. Them. Oh. It's not, it's not California. Um, it's a, um, let's see, the first one. Progressive is California. Actually, we have three. Huh? How old is the one in California? Uh, it's almost a year. Okay. So realistically, um, with that one, you know, the fact that it's almost a year, and what I, I would, I, I don't know this, but I would assume that you haven't paid the eight, the eight hundred on it yet. Not yet. Okay. So we put so, we put the uh we put the Don and Brad number on it and it has its EIN. Okay. So what I would suggest is that something like that may be fifteen hundred to two grand. All right? Okay. Because you're gonna take you're gonna take you're gonna take eight of that and you're gonna make the make the payment of that. Right. You know what I mean before you transfer it? You want to make sure that you make the uh, that you pay the secretary. Um, I'm sorry, state franchise tax board the, their their fee out of that out of that you know eighteen hundred two grand. Right. Okay. So your net your your gross net will be you know about a thousand dollars. That's that's how I would probably price it. Um, because it's California. Anything outside of the state of California. You know, maybe it's bias on my part, or just what I've seen over over time. Um, California seems to have value. Texas seems to have value. New York seems to have value. Other states, like in the Midwest or whatever, not as much value, probably because just the the the, the amount of people in those states, and the, you know, it's right. just you know, it just is what it is. But Texas, California, they have a higher premium. Than some place like um, North Dakota. Okay. So if it's outside of the state of California and it's not Texas or New York, um, then if, if we're a California corp and it's 11 years old, I would probably, I personally, would probably try to get you know 12 grand for it because it's 11 years old. Um, you know, easily 12 grand. Um, maybe even fifteen grand for it, but once again, if it's outside of the state of California, it might be worth maybe five to eight grand, depending on where it's at. But I, I, I have to say to you over and over, just simply go to the Wyoming Corporation and see what their pricing is, because they're okay. actively in the business of okay. selling shark, and so. You know, that's what I would suggest to you, because that would give you okay. your best, your best idea. Okay, I appreciate that. All right, and that. now I I gotta ask this question. So, have, have you have you gleaned anything from the stuff I've been saying about how I conduct my businesses? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Awesome. Um, way back in the day, we you and I did when you were doing the uh the CPNs. Um, I did. I some still of do that. Those. Yeah, I got an yeah, email mm -hmm. from you a while back. Yeah, um, you were doing a special deal on them at that time. Um, but in any case, I've been working on um, my credit, and That's mine's good. went mine's went down because of co-signing for other people and I I my family members. Right, and so if I have you to give them extra money for whatever it is they're trying to do, then the cosign never, ever, 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 ever cosign. I don't care if it's your own <laughs> child. Yeah, I got that. I got mm -hmm. that. You know, with the experience, I got it. Um, but that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm working on that um, and getting the process done. Um, I found a. Um, a uh, little niche where, you know, usually it takes some time to actually get 
BKs off. And even if you don't go full through the BK, um, because I had filed, but then I went and took it out and I um, uh, changed it because I didn't want to do it. I changed my mind. But the thing is, is that once you put it in the system, uh, even if you didn't go through with it, it's still considered a BK. Well, it's going to report, your credit. but it's not considered a BK. It's because it's, you didn't file it. You just you did what I did when I found myself in a, in a bad situation a decade ago. Um, you 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 filed the paperwork, but you didn't go through with it. But they still reported it. And so, right. go ahead. I'm sorry. Just, just go ahead. I didn't. No, that's you're you. right. No, go ahead. No, go no. ahead. Go ahead. No. No, no. You um, want to say that's what you, I was going to say. That they, that's what I was going to say is that they had it on there as if they were uh, as if there was a a BK that actually happened, and it didn't happen. So it doesn't show discharged, and it doesn't show. Um, where it's been released, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. so, so what what is the what is the niche that you found? No, what is the niche that you found? Oh, um, that I could. Uh, there's a letter I have that gives the citing, or should I say, the statute and the information for it that you sent in with it with the number because I've also noticed too. Um, that it shows like it's two BKs, but it's only one that I took out and mm -hmm. they just change one number on the end. So it makes it seem like it's two. Okay. I got it. Okay. So you found a way to so, remove that? In the right. In that? Okay. Would right. you mind sharing that letter with me? Yeah, sure. Okay. Just email it to me. You have my email. Okay. Okay. That, no I really problem, but I, I really enjoy. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed. Um, I enjoy. Now, last week when we didn't have it, it was my birthday week, which was like uh, I was excited about having the class, but at the same token, we were up, you know, a long time the night before, so I was kind of glad and relieved <laughs> that I didn't miss anything. Um, and so I was excited this morning about being on, but I really appreciate the information. Awesome! Awesome! So I'm going to give out, since you mentioned that, I'm going to give out a couple of tidbits that have worked for us in our credit repair. Um, uh, you know, you guys, you know, I'm, I'm going to say this to you. I'm going to tell you something that doesn't work, but you have to use it very sparingly. All right? You can't use it with everything that you're doing. Um, so one of the things that we have found that works is <laughs> – I feel like it's kind of funny about telling you guys this, but um, please use it sparingly. Please, okay? So whether you realize it or not, um, if, if when you send them a letter, and everybody, when you're sending them a credit repair letter, if you can afford to do so, you should send it registered mail, right? You should send it registered mail. Very important, in my opinion. Um, because you, it, it, it starts that timer once they've received it. And then you get that green card back. Now, so let's say that you send a company um, a letter asking them to validate the debt that you have with them. But let's say that when you send that letter that – there's nothing in the envelope because you forgot to send the letter in the envelope. And then so, therefore, that company does not respond to you in the appropriate amount of time. And then you subsequently go to the credit bureaus and say, here's my card showing, right, they have not responded to me in the allotted period of time. And so I want that removed, right? I've, I've asked, here's the letter, there's this, that, and the other. You know, quite often it will come off of your file. Sounds kind of, kind of, kind of different, doesn't it? But it, it has worked. People, you, if you forget to put the letter in, but you have that green card showing you sent it, 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 tends to work. You can't abuse it, though. Um, 
one of the other things for you individuals that have small debts that you are reporting to your to your credit file um, this is this has worked for me personally uh, I want to say three times small debt that I that I can afford to pay all right what I would simply do so I'll tell you I one of them was a phone bill and all I simply did was um, was a cell phone bill I had an old bill and I literally went to Verizon and I paid them directly with a check right and let that check clear I waited I waited I think it was 30 or 45 days, right? I per, it's 30 days, they say, but I prefer 45. The check has been cashed because the company, they're going to process that check. And you just put on that check, paid in full. Their information is in the book, Good Credit is Sexy, on how to do this process, and it has worked every single time. Once you wait the 45 days, that they're not giving you that money back. They're nothing. And that debt has already been given over to a collection agency. Guess what happens? You wait that period of time, you contact the collection agency, and you say, hey, you guys are reporting this, this debt erroneously, and I want it removed. And as a matter of fact, here is where I paid the company, and they have to remove the debt. I've done that several times. I did it with cable company. I did it with um, cell phone. And I did it with, oh, um, um, another cable company for a business I had out in San Bernardino at a time. So it works, it works, it works. You know, uh, if you have a debt and you have the old account numbers and all that, send the check in. Send the check in, you know, put something in the memo section, read the book, Good Credit is Sexy. Um, if you buy the, you buy the whole thing that they have, it's, it's 29 bucks, I believe it is. 29, 39 tops. And it'll give you the book, their their credit repair letters, give you all that, and it'll tell you how to do these little things. That um, it doesn't tell you how to do the, you know, not putting something in the envelope, but it gives you all this other little stuff that you can do to to you know almost immediately get stuff removed from your from your credit file legitimately. By the way, does anybody else have any other questions? I'm 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 here. I'm willing to answer whatever you may have. So Pasquale, this is Hiram. How you doing? Hey, I'm good. How are you doing, sir? <laughs> Great pleasure, sir. Um, just so that I can understand, because I just logged on, and I guess I came in the middle of the conversation. Um, when you have a small collections account, and they report it, or they send it up, if you have a, uh, an account that goes to collection agency, and they send it over to the collection agency, um, and you wait the 45 days, you still pay the company? But what if you try to pay the company and they say that they already sent that bill out to the collection agent? No, 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 no. So let me let me back up on this. So the, the way it would work is this. If, if something's already at the collection agency, and let's say it's been there for a little bit, then all you do is just send in your, your payment, send in your, the balance in full, that you owed to the company itself. So be it whatever company it is, right? You send it, you don't, you know, no fanfare, no phone calls. You just let their system, because, you know, they're not people processing these, this, these debts, obviously, for the most part. So they're going to, they're going to, they're going to, their machinery is going to collect that, um, uh, that debt, I mean, that, you know, that, 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 uh, that check. Um, showing the, the amount paid in full, and you're going to write paid in full, right, on the check. <laughs> Excuse me. You're going to write paid in full on the check. They're just, it's just going to get processed. You know, they don't, they don't take the time to look at every single check and go, oh, okay, well, this is for this. That check gets processed. You put the account numbers on it. You put paid in full as agreed, and then um, you let them process it. You let that check clear and then let it marinate for 45 days, right? Then you go to not back to the, to the company itself. Now you go to the debt collection agency. So you say to the debt collection agency, hey, this debt has been paid in full as agreed. 
and you guys are reporting it erroneously, and then they have to remove it. Okay. Because legally, illegally, you don't have a debt with them. They have just, if you read the FCRA, the Fair Credit Reporting Act, you know, it, it very clearly explains to you that your debt is with the with the with the people that you that you contracted with. You never contracted with you know X Y Z debt collector. Never. Now they can buy your debt. They can buy your debt, but you always have that argument that I'm not contracted with you. And and you know, true enough, the way it works in this, even though it's not. Even though the law doesn't, the FCRA, um, uh, the Fair Credit Reporting Act, um, and, the, and the Fair Collection Act, you know, read a certain way. You know, these are big companies, and so they have they have the courts more on their team than on yours because it's just a foul system. But but with that said, there are certain basic things that have to occur, and if you don't owe that debt anymore, and you can prove that debt. And you can prove that that not only to to the credit bureaus and to the to the collection agency, but if need be, um, to the FTC, the uh, federal um, uh, federal trade credit. Oh, what is it? Um, God, dog, I can't even think of it right now. Maybe so many things I'm having brain. I apologize to you guys, but um, um, federal trade commission. Good lord. Um, but you, you shouldn't even have to go that far. Once you can prove that the debt has been paid satisfactorily, right, because you're writing that yeah. on the check. Um, and I sent you the book a long time ago, Good Credit is Sexy, so you should have that in your in your arsenal stuff that you've gotten from me. And it will explain to you step by step on how to do that. Okay, so now uh, once you do that, because the, the Fair Credit uh, Reporting Act, um, they can also be fined too. Am I correct? Yeah, but you know what? There, there, there are reasons that you can go after them. As a matter of fact, there's some information online where um, uh, there's some YouTube videos on it as well um, on these people that are going after collection agencies and literally suing them for for a, a thousand because I think it's a thousand dollars. Per violation or ten thousand dollars per violation or something like that. So, like, if they call you and and um, and you explain to them, um, hey, um, uh, you know, uh, this is my work line, and they don't hang up off, they don't hang up, you know, then then that's a violation. Uh, if they call, can they give out your your personal information to someone else? That's a violation. You know, there's there's like a thousand different things. Um, you know, not literally, but there's a ton of different reasons why, you know, they can, be, why they're violating, um, uh, you know, the law, and there are consequences for that. But do you really want to go through all that? I mean, there are attorneys that actually do that stuff now, but is, it's like, kind of like, you know, for the amount of money you're going to get, is it worth it? Now, if they do, like, some of the YouTube videos that you see and some of the news articles that are on YouTube about um, violations like there's this little this young girl um, someone had attached debt to her and these accredited agencies went after her aggressively and so the attorney was going after I forgot what it was but it was in excess of a hundred thousand um, dollars for going after this minor for credit that that apparently she didn't even occur so but they they were leaving messages explaining out the credit you can't do that they can't arbitrarily leave messages um, talking about the debt. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Yes, it does. So that, that type of thing. Okay. Anything else? Uh, corporate credit. Now, yes, sir. I have a, cor I have a corporation. Um, I, it hasn't had that opportunity to build the actual corporate credit it needed to. And I guess I'm trying to find the most feasible way to build this corporation up with corporate credit because I've had the corporation since 99. Okay. But I haven't so, any business on it. Okay. 
So here's what I would suggest to you, if you, if you want to know the truth. There, there's, a, there's that ebook that I know that you received because we spoke about it. Okay. The ebook with the with the okay. So the second part of that ebook that I sent you um, deals with basic corporate credit. So corporate credit that anybody can get. So the first half of that ebook is about um, building, excuse me, building basic personal credit, right, to get your personal credit up. But if you look to the second portion of it, it, it has a list of companies that you can go after. Um, to build your, your basic corp. And, and so what I would suggest is that you just simply go through that, that book and, and that's how you're going to start building up your corporate credit. And we always got to remember that corporate credit is credit that is given to your, your business and or corporation that is not based or predicated on you as an individual or anybody else in the business. It's basically given to the business and or corporation based upon its own good standing. And then business credit is credit that is granted to your your business and or corporation, but you or somebody else is a guarantor. And then personal credit, we all know what that is, so there's no need going into all that. But so you always got to remember, um, business credit, you're the guarantor. Corporate credit is, it, it's, is based purely on the good standing of the corporation itself. And, but, but literally, uh, you can do that yourself, and I'll give you a tidbit of information. Um, I, I don't think that you should do this uh, because you already have the places where you can go to and start um, building your, your personal credit, the tier one and then tier two places. But let's say if you don't want to be bothered with that, you can go on, on Fiverr um, and on Fiverr.com uh, there and you, you, you know, there are people on Fiverr, you just put in corporate credit um, in the search queue and there are people on Fiverr that you can pay like 200, 250, and they will set up your first eight to ten um, uh, corporations. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, uh, um, corporate lines for you. So you know, I, I wouldn't do it because you're spending two fifty um, to have somebody do something that all you have to do is sit at the computer and apply at these different places. You know, the thirty net, thirty day net places like U uh, U line, Bags and Bows, uh, FedEx, Kinkos. Um, so on and so forth. It doesn't take anything um, to to you know to apply for those places, and they're going to give you 30 day net uh, without even thinking. And some of them, when they're listed in that book, some of them will report not only to D and B, which is important, but they will also, even more important to me, they will report to Experian as well. And you want to start building your Experian business file. Hugely important. Okay. Okay. I appreciate that, man. Sir. Not, not a problem. Anytime, sir. Um, anybody else have any other questions for me? No, it's um, it's Fiverr, F I V E R R dot com. So it's Pfizer, F I F as in Frank. Uh huh. F I V E R R. It's double R's dot com. Okay. Got it. Yeah. So, but once again, you know, you can, you can, if, if you just feel like you just don't have the time, then utilize, you know, them, right? But, um, you know, if you wanted to, it, it doesn't really take that long to do it, uh, to just apply at these various places. But, you know, whatever makes you happy, Captain. <laughs> Anyone <laughs> else? I, I'm sorry? Yeah. Say it again, I keep on speaking over you, and I miss what you're saying. Okay. So does anybody else have any... Um, any questions? Uh, no, not at all. From, not at all from Hiram. No. Okay. Anyone else? Um, last call because this is it's ten seventeen, and if there's no questions, I'm going to get off the phone. All right, Marcel. Thank you. You're you're welcome. Well, let's see. I do have a question. 
It says, I am trying to, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let me see. I do have a question. Let's see how to get today's recording. Um, I will send out an, um, if today's recording worked out well, I will send out a, an email with the link for today's recording. Um, you know, if, if, uh, if it worked out well, because honestly, the, um, my technical skills are, are limited. So I think I have everything right. Um, Joy's not on the call today and neither is Nicole. So I'm, I'm kind of, uh, swimming alone, so to speak. So, but I will, I will send out the uh, link for the call to everyone. Um, if, if, if the recording worked out properly. Does anyone else have any questions? It could be about, you know, starting your business. It can be about uh, personal credit, business credit, corporate credit, um, whatever. I'm I willing to, I'm sorry? I said not at all for me. Okay. Well, uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. I want to give you feedback later. Uh, okay. So with with um, I I think I answered everybody's questions, both that have been um, sent to me via chat, as well as um, uh, over the phone. So I thank you guys very much, and um, I um, my my truest hope is that you guys have have, have learned something. From these calls to you know, um, I, I'm I'm trying to give you the stuff that I literally charge people two hundred fifty dollars an hour for, or if you're in one of my programs, uh, five grand for, <laughs> for my business uh, credit building program, you know, um, and and people pay me, you know, you know, and that's the cool thing about it. As a matter of fact, when I at the end of last year. Um, with just a, a little bit of promotion, you know, I had eight or nine people jump on, um, paying me, you know, four grand, um, to be a part of my business credit building program. So this year we went up to five grand, but, you know, just a little bit of promotion. So once again, you know, it, 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 it goes to what I've been trying to explain to you guys, you know, about the myth of having to have money to start something. Now, true enough, true enough to grow something, it takes money. But to start a business, you can do that literally with whatever skill set you have within your person right now. I, it just, you know, all of us have some sort of skill set. I mean, if you're a grown up, um, you've been through enough life that that you've learned something, whatever that skill set may be, can be translated into a business that you can start just by giving out that skill set. And so what I'm doing with these calls, quite frankly, and to be very honest with you, is um, I'm putting my skill set on display. And, and, you know, maybe not for every last person on this call, but a lot, a lot of you will say, you know, I want that person to be my coach. I want that person to work with me because of their displayed skill sets. And so what does this cost me, you know, to do this? Um, a, I'm, I'm, I feel as if I'm being a benefit to people um, in the greatest way, right, by, by educating them. And um, um, B, um, it, it helps me learn my my craft better because the the best way to learn something is to teach it and and that i learned decades ago and i believe it to be true to this very day the best way to learn something is to teach it because it forces you to have to know more than the people that you're that you're speaking with and so thank you all very much for for coming on the call um you know i'll ask this one more time if there are any questions whatsoever I'm more than happy to answer them. So if you don't have any questions, it's already 1022. So we're well past um, our, we're well past our, um, let's see, is this, uh, Tiffany, 
is asking me, is this correct, Fiverr? No, Tiffany, it's F-I-V-E-R-R. F-I-V-E-R-R, Fiverr. So the, it's like five and then an extra R on it. Well, all two R's really. But anyways, Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R dot com. So, all right, guys. Um, thank you so very much for for coming on. And, um, you know, hopefully you guys got something out of this. You know, I'm trying to give you um, the best information that I can. Um, but uh, you got to do your own research as well. And if you're not, you know, you got to, you got to ask questions. So thank you guys so, so much. And this call is over. Take care, everybody. Thanks, Pascal. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Pascal. You're welcome. You're welcome. Hope you got something out of it. All right. Yes, I did. Awesome.